What's up, everybody out there? This is NorCam coming at you live on this Blue Friday. I'm not driving the car, just so you know. I've got 80s Broncos fan driving the car, doing a little work stuff today. But during this morning, you probably all heard by now that Richard Sherman has been officially cut by the Seahawks. Um, it's not entirely a surprise in that I think we saw this coming. A lot of the news was repeating that, uh, re reporting that this was going to happen over the last couple of days. I wasn't going to really jump on it until I heard it for officially, but it, it has been made official. Um, mixed emotions on this, but I think the first part about it is for me, looking at this during the off season since the season ended, um, I, I always thought there was a possibility this could happen, um, mostly because. The salary cap implications of keeping him on the team for this year with a year left in his contract and the injury. The injury really isn't. Anyway, uh, and then for, for Sherman going out there and being a free agent, you know, he's got this injury recovery he'd have to deal with too. So it's really a double whammy, double loose situation for, for both parties. And if you really think about it, you know, there were rumors last year when. Um, they were talking about trying to trade Richard Sherman last offseason, and it didn't happen. Um, in retrospect, given how it's all played out, it would have been better to have happened last year because Seattle probably would have gotten a some pretty high value for it, and then Richard Sherman probably would have gotten you know uh, paid more. We would have just had to deal with a heartbreak last year, but since we didn't make the play, you know, it played out the way it has. But. Um, trying to stick with the business parks and trying not to let the emotions of this moment get to me. But there is a, I won't call it a silver lining, but there's still this chance that he's, as I said in my title, is he's gone officially today, but is he gone for good? That remains to be seen because Seattle had to do it today because the official start of the 2018 season is Wednesday. That's the official start of free agency. Seattle had to make the move before Wednesday because that's when his salary would have been on the books, the salary cap would have been in effect, so they had to do it sooner than later. So that part of it is why it's not a surprise. However, um, does that mean he would never come back? Is there no chance he'll come back? There's always a chance he could come back because what, what Richard's gonna have to do now, and as some of you may or may not know, Richard Sherman is acting as his own agent, like Russell Okung did uh, a couple years ago. That could be bad, it could be good, if in Richard's sense, in terms of getting himself a deal, because there are, there are certain advantages. I mean, an agent being able to talk to certain teams, being able to disclose things that they may not tell you as a player versus what they might tell you as an agent and so forth. But uh, he's doing, doing it for himself, he's a smart guy, thinks he can pull it off, so we'll see. But um, could he come back? And it all depends on, on two things. It depends on the relationship he had with Seattle leaving, and nobody knows what the feeling was when he said goodbye to the team. Was it, you know, the, the, the tweet I saw or, the, or what I heard from an interview quote from him made it sound like Seattle is allowing him to go to free agency, so he appreciates that. So that may just be a PR version of his comments, but if he truly left on good terms, what that means is Richard Sherman is going to go out there and find out what teams are willing to pay him for. And he's got some time. He's not really no, in no hurry. He could do this, and he, he, may not, he, may, he may wait until right before the season starts because he may not, his, his injury situation may not be clear until that point. And so he may be one of those situations where some team at the last second who's desperate in need of a corner might just sign him right before the season starts when they realize, okay, he's going to be good to go when the season starts. So a team might make him a deal, you know, at some point between now and the start of the season. But if another team doesn't offer much and Seattle's willing to offer him something and he comes back and talks to them and they could get something worked out, he could come back and potentially be with the Seahawks again. So it's, he's not, you know, it's not like a trade. Like Bennett, he's done. He's gone because he's on the Eagles officially now. My, uh, Sherman is not with a team. He's just unemployed by the Seahawks at this moment. So there is a chance he could decide to come back. I guess I hold that option as a possibility. But it would have to be that they're in good terms and that no other team is offering him anything better than what the Seahawks would offer. So kind of like any other unrestricted free agent for that matter, whether it be Jimmy Graham or Paul Richardson or Sheldon Richardson, all those guys are basically in the same 
going to be in the same boat come Wednesday. They're all going to start be fielding offers and deciding, do I want to go with this team or is Seattle going to give me an offer that I might want to take and just, you know, see where it goes. But as of today, yes, Richard Sherman is no longer Seahawk. And I guess now this is the part where I can get into the whole, how do I feel? And all business aside, understanding the cap and why they had to do it, I understand that. But the sad emotional part about of it for me is definitely sad. I was, I was thinking about the last few years, going back to 2012, you know, R Russell Wilson's first season, our first Super Bowl, Richard Sherman, who did the tip against Kaepernick's pass to get us into Super Bowl 48, which we ultimately won. I remember there was the built the tip movement. They wanted to create a statue of Richard Sherman doing the tip that they had to put in front of the, the Central League field. It never happened. Now, looking back, I can see why it probably never did happen because there was always this possibility this would happen, that he would be gone sooner than we ever expected him to be. So, you know, never, I never really thought about Seattle without Richard Sherman because it's been such a solid part of it. But all of a sudden now this is where reality hits you in the face and you go, well, that's it. You know, he may not be in the Seattle uniform again. And it's gonna be a whole new look of this team but, you know, I think the saddest part I feel seeing, and this is so early, the free agency hasn't even started and it's already this crazy, but seeing Michael Bennett go, seeing now Richard Sherman leaving, and potentially many others, I think the, the saddest part about this is that so many of these internal issues that we saw with outbursts on the sideline and just inner struggles that have eventually got us to this point, I know a lot of that had to do with the ending of Super Bowl 49. And I think so much about at that point where things went so horribly wrong in Arizona that day, when I watched it before my very eyes, Super Bowl 49 slipping through our fingers and landing into the hands of Malcolm Butler, it really did change the course of the destiny of our team. It, it fractured the psyche of our team, and I don't think we ever truly recovered. I don't think we ever really got over. Russell Wilson tried to have powwow in Hawaii to get all the players together to talk about putting his, the demons of it behind him. I think that was all in good effort and everything, but the reality is so many of the issues we have as team stem from the fact that we didn't run the ball and score with Marshawn Lynch at the one-yard line. And Richard Sherman many times brought up the fact that he got frustrated with the coaching staff because he didn't trust him, that he felt like ever since that point, they let us down and he never let it go. And so I think this is part of the move to cleanse the team of those players who have helped the grudge of Super Bowl 49's loss in the team that's created this, you know, this struggle. So clearing the coaches, clearing the players, I mean, it's almost, you know, all part of, of you know, getting a fresh start. I won't say a complete rebuild because, you know, at, at least we have a franchise quarterback. When you have that, it's never a true rebuild like San Francisco had to go through, like Arizona's going to have to go through, like the Rams had to go through for so many years when they sucked until they finally got a good quarterback. We don't have to go to that extreme, but our defense is definitely going through a rebuild um, with the exception of we still have Bobby Wagner and uh, you know KJ Wright for a little while longer anyway. And um, who's the other one, I guess? Um, Frank Clark. Outside of that, everybody, every, it's all fresh faces. Oh, with the exception, Earl Thomas. I think I've been saying all along, Seattle's going to have to decide which of those two they're going to keep, they, that they couldn't keep them both. And I think it's pretty clear which one they plan on keeping. I would be very shocked if they don't get it done with Earl Thomas. I just can't see them losing both. Earl Thomas, I think, is too valuable. And it's kind of funny because Earl Thomas is the one making all the noise about wanting to get traded, or not traded, but get... Dallas Cowboys, come find me if I get kicked to the curb. I think he'll get kicked, kicked to the curb. I think I think Earl Thomas will will be renegotiated. He's the one piece I think they can. Thomas and Bobby Wagner, they are the they are the going to be left of the core of this defense. What's remaining of the LOB. and then the only wild card there would be uh, Camp Chancellor. Will Camp Chancellor return? I'm, as much as I want to see him come back, I don't. I, it's going to be too much of a medical risk that you won't get uh, cleared. I would love to be surprised there, 
but um, that's it. So, so you got a lot of you guys are uh, commenting in. Fogel Productions. If we lose Earl, I will be so damn pissed. Yep, I I agree. I think he's too valuable to let go. I mean, when I think of two players who whose impact was so strong that when they were gone, you clearly noticed a drop in the team. That was Bobby Wagner and Earl Thomas, probably in that order. This past season, we had our, in the stretch, in the end, when we were trying to get into the playoffs, when Bobby Wagner pulled his hammy and was out, or in very limited capacity, we were horrible. He, took, he pulled his hamstring in the Jacksonville Jaguars game. Suddenly, we gave up a ton of points where we were shutting him down with him in there. He was half himself against the Rams at home, and we got decimated by them in that awful game. But Bobby Wagner didn't look anything like his normal self in that game. And then Earl Thomas last year, when he broke his leg in about the same time of the year last season, uh, that affected our ability to close out the season and, and finish the playoff games as well without him in there as well. So, you know, to me, those are the two most valuable players on our defense, uh, Earl Thomas and Bobby Wagner. So I think they get it done with Earl. But the focus of this is, is about Sherman. Um, all I can say is, you know, we, we grew so used to having him on the left side, pretty much invincible to where quarterbacks just wouldn't even throw that way. I mean, it was, it was like they just wouldn't even try. So he had that side of the field just completely locked down. Uh, and he was so good. He was really good. Great tackler. People underestimate Richard Sherman's ability to tackle in the open field. He was a great pass coverage guy, um, but he could tackle. Yesterday I was talking to a uh, thing that maybe he could have gone and transitioned to being a strong safety um, instead, you know, but uh, and he could have. He's a good tackler. And, you know, even if he'd slowed down a step, he could have maybe evolved to that position. But alas, that's not going to happen now. But. Um, but then his smarts, because you know, if you look at it, if you look at his uh, his, his his attributes, his assets, Richard Sherman's not a fast guy. You know, he runs the forties, pretty slow compared to some of these speedy guys who are running four threes and four fours. Richard Sherman was like a four six, I think, pretty slow comparatively speaking. But you rarely see him get beat because he was just so smart. He had that technique down, and he had that long body, long arm, so teams could rarely go deep on him because usually it's with his brain. But it was up here that his football IQ, he knew what was happening before it happened. Um, and that's, you know, that's the other part that'll be missed, his, his, uh, the psychological edge that Sherman brought to the team, both as being able to see a play coming as well as, as a leader in the team. So, so, yeah, it's still a sad day as much as I knew this had to happen. Just because you know it's going to happen doesn't mean you're not bummed about it. And so... It's just going to be weird to see him, if he does get picked on another team, to see him in another uniform. It's like seeing an old girlfriend with another guy, you know, it's just, you know, who knows what team he's going to end up on, but either way, it's just, you know, when it's been on one team this whole time and it's been such a core, such a, a basic part that you've never even thought about being on another team, suddenly, just, you know, imagine Sh Sherman in a Patriots outfit, Sherman in a Falcons outfit. Uh, you know, just, it's going to be weird. You know, one of your best lines in all your Rivals videos was the one where you're arguing with the, uh, the fan. He says, I do think, uh, I do think Russell will hit his favorite, or you said, oh, help me Tom out. Tom Kaepernick will hit will his hit favorite, his favorite. Uh, receiver, Richard Sherman. Too bad it's Richard Sherman. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. It's one of my favorite Too bad it's Richard Sherman. <laughs> that's right. Um, because, yeah, for a while, when Kaepernick was still playing, well, that seems like he ought to go now. Uh, Sherman, all against uh, Tom Brady in home in 2000, what was that, 2012, I think. Um, Great picture on the cover of Madden. Was it Madden? Oh, yeah, when he was on the 2014, 2014 cover of, uh, cover of, uh, of the Madden, yep, the year after the Super Bowl. Um, man, just... Ah, the memories. But <laughs> eating turkey leg in San Francisco, um, trash talking with the Vikings, where he's yawning. <laughs> um, mic'd up, it was pretty funny. But 
Yeah. It, it's it's not going to hit until the season starts because you know it's not until you actually see the other player on another team. But you know, that's, that's, there's more to come. I'm sure we're going to see Michael Bennett as an Eagle, Sherman as some other player. You know, but some of the other guys are not as attached to. It's not as hard. But for for core guys who were there before the championship, you know, that's the one that kind of gets to you. And again, going back to that Super Bowl 49, it's just. I think the just most disappointing is that we had such a dominant defense, uh, Bennett and Sherman, at one point, top of their game, best players in the league in their positions at us at a time. And for our defense that was so good for such a long time to not have gotten that team two Super Bowls is disappointing. We were one and done, and we should have had two in a row. And again, had we won that game, the fate and destiny and path that would have changed, we'd be in a totally different place than we are right now. But that's the, that's the, I think that's what makes me the most saddest. Now that the, the band is breaking up, we all knew the band was going to break up at some point. I just thought by the time the band broke up, we'd have two rings. Should have had two rings, or maybe even more. But we missed out. We missed out because of one bad play at, with three feet from the goal line. I mean, that's that's the reality. That that slaps you in the face every time you think about it. So, you know, we will never have the same team together. It's going to be a start over plugging new names, new faces, and, you know, maybe we do have LOB 2.0 eventually, and it's just going to be eventually maybe one member of that part in there, uh, but, uh, you know, in a in not so distant future, it'll be completely different pieces, and maybe we'll have a new LOB in there. Maybe we have some of those guys already on the team. Maybe it's a guy who's a free agent we haven't uh, even thought of yet. Maybe it's somebody to be drafted in the next year or two, but... You know, it happened once, it could happen again, but it's going to have to be with different faces uh, because those that we uh, had it with during our good run from 2013 to now, it's quickly changing. And Richard Sherman is the latest casualty, latest cap casualty um, in the Seahawks offseason. So that's it. Beast Mode says, you got to take Malcolm Butler and we will take Richard Sherman. You know, I, I threw that out there uh, on Facebook. I threw a little poll out there. I said, how would you guys think about Richard Sherman trading for uh, Malcolm Butler? And people were like, what? Not in a million years. No way. No way we're letting, letting go of Richard Sherman. People didn't think it could happen. But it's happening and I saw it coming. So, here we are. Anyway, there's always hope for next year. We've got a lot of work to do, a lot of holes to fill. The holes are getting bigger and more plentiful. But we have Richard, we have Bobby Wagner, we've got Russell Wilson. And those two things at least keep me optimistic that we've got a chance. There's always a chance. All right. Well, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your day, everybody. <laughs> uh, more excitement to happen, I'm sure. But next Wednesday, it's going to be one after another after another. The the league will be exploding with news of players moving here and there, coming and going. So it'll be fun to talk about that. I think I'm going to try to, if I have time, I'm going to try to put out a little video, a little primer, a little free agency for dummies video. I think we need that because somebody was asking, well, why don't we see? <laughs> Free agency um, video to kind of explain the process of free agency. I don't think everybody completely understands it. What's the franchise tag? What's what's uh, what happens when you franchise tag somebody? Uh, what's a what's a restricted free agent versus unrestricted and all that stuff? Some people are I think a little confused. So maybe before Wednesday, I try to put that up just to just to clear the air because it is uh, a little tricky to understand. I don't even completely understand. It. I got to bone up on my own information, but. For now, that is the news of the day. I don't think anything else will happen. But Richard Sherman, no longer Seahawk, but could, could come back should the perfect storm uh, of circumstances occur. We'll see what happens. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll talk to you guys soon.